Hey everyone, Jessica Cabasi here. In today's tutorial, I'm going to be showing you guys how to get a double exposure flower portrait effect. It actually looks really complicated, but it's not, so just bear with me. I'm going to show you guys exactly how I did it. This is the after image, uh, so hopefully I'll get something uh, sort of like this. And this is the original before image, which we will be starting with. So um, I'm actually just going to start right now. Uh, first thing that I'm going to do is show you guys the flower images that I picked out. Now I just got these from Google just for the sake of the tutorial. Usually I'll select specific resource stock images, but again just for this tutorial I literally googled flowers and just picked whatever was there. I was looking for something that had a darker background, so a lighter flower against a darker background was perfect. So I'm using this as my main flower image. So I'm just copying and pasting that back to my main image. And that looks pretty small. Um, if your image is bigger like mine, what you can do is just uh, scale it. I would not recommend this for every image because it does become pixelated, but it just depends. This, I mean, I'm not going to be zooming in on this or showing it full size or printing it out anywhere. Um, this is just a tutorial, so we're using this, this small image, and we can scale it. It doesn't look that bad. Um, so I am going to be scaling it just a little. And you can always, personal preference if you want to make it bigger, that's totally fine. Um, the first thing that I'm going to do though is I actually want to, well, I'm going to make this a tiny bit bigger just because we're starting with her shoulder first. So I think that's pretty good. Um, the first thing that I'm going to do is go to image, adjustments, and then levels. And I'm just going to make the image a little uh, more contrasted, just so that when we set it to lighten, it'll show up a little bit more. And you can play around with these, but I already have the numbers that I used. So again, I'm just looking for something a little bit darker. I don't want it that dark. I might go, yeah, I think that's perfect actually. So I'm gonna be using this and I'll show you the before and after. So just bringing out, the, especially the details of this image as well, so pressing OK now. And we're going to go from normal to lighten. And you can see now it shows more. And um, if we use that lighter image, I mean it would have been a lot lighter, but I think this method, method meshes in with um, the picture a little bit better. So what we're going to do now is create a layer mask. So by pressing this, add layer mask button down here. And I'm going to take my brush, and I'm actually going to select a textured brush. So you can select really any one. I'm going to be using this one. And it's it's just a default brush, you guys. If you go to Photoshop default brushes, you will find this brush. Make sure that you are selecting this box right here and not this box. So make sure that over here it says layer mask. So we are simply coloring, you're channeling your inner third grader and just coloring over here. Make sure your opacity is like 88, 90 or 100 percent. Really, it's your preference. I am using a higher opacity for this. So I think this looks pretty good to begin. And what I'm going to do is simply duplicate this layer by pressing command J and deleting. All I'm doing is dragging this down to the garbage. I love deleting stuff, goodbye. Okay, and what I'm gonna do is command T, transform, and just move it around a little just so I can give it a little bit of variety. So it's not exactly the same. And it's really, you know, the, the image that I showed you guys in the beginning, the after image, took me like two and a half to three hours. So, yeah. Um, if you want like the Lady Gaga look, you could keep that over her eye. But, yeah, so we're not going to do that, though. And now you are just going to repeat this step for the top part of her head. And then over here, I'm going to add a flower.
Okay, and now I'm just going to be adding a separate flower transparency that I found. And this is going to go underneath her eye. And I'm not going to be using the light and layer mode. What I'm going to be doing is going from normal to multiply, and that gives it a different effect. And I'm just going to go to command transform and then scale it down to fit to the bottom part of her eye, kind of like eyelashes. And again, just creating a layer mask. And I'm going to go back to my default round brush, making sure the opacity is 99. And what I'm going to do is simply Command J, so duplicate it, and then set it, and then um, press Command T, and right click. Flip horizontal just so we can add it to the other side of her eye. And you're going to have to scale it just a tiny bit. You'll have to do some erasing. So we just want it to show up on the bottom part of her eye. Kind of looks like that. So I think it looks pretty good so far. This, so this is how it looks with just all the flower texture on and now we just have to add the color layers and then we'll be all finished so the first layer I'm going to be using is the curves layer so go to layer, new adjustment layer, and then curves and we are keeping this on RGB and we're simply adding a little bit of contrast or rather like not uncontrasted And again, any of these layers can be changed if you do change your mind about how you want it to look. And I'm going to set this down to 26%. So it's just slightly. It's not too crazy. And the next layer we're going to go to is layer, no adjustment layer, and then black and white. And I'm just going to select the tint box. And then I'm going to go from normal to soft light. And we're going to keep this at the full 100%. Of course, you can change this if you'd like. And we're going to go back to layer, new adjustment layer, and then curves. And we're just going to play with the RGB a tiny bit. We're not going to do too much. And then we're going to go down from RGB to blue. And I just want to add some of some blue in there just because I think it complements the flowers really nicely. And we can drop this down from 100 to 70 percent. Or Actually, I'm sorry, I lied, 71 percent. And then we can go to layer, new adjustment layer, and then selective color. And we're going to the reds. And through the reds, you can actually change how you want the like the color of the flowers. If you want them lighter, or you want them darker. Um, I'm setting mine. Hold on. I'm setting mine a little bit in between. And we're going now to neutrals. And it's very slight. And then the last one is black. So I just kind of enhance it just a tiny bit. And we're keeping this um, selective color. Um, we can keep this at 100%. So curves back to 70 Okay, that's perfect. Okay, so far so good. Um, we're going to go to layer, new fill layer, and then solid color. And you can select any type of light, your favorite yellow color. And then you can set that to multiply. And we're going to go really um, low with this one, so around like 17%. Again, it really, like the picture is not going to change if you choose a bad yellow. So 
Don't get too, I mean, it's really, just you can pick any one you, that you want. And we're going to do one more curves layer. Actually, okay, I lied. After, one more after this one. And we're going to stay in RGB. And this layer will specifically be for luminosity, and I'll show you what that does in just a second. This, if you go to normal, from normal to luminosity, it just gives it like a paler look. It like whites out the skin just a little bit, which is nice. And then we're going to go to our, this is, okay, this is for real, the last curves layer. And this one is going to be blue, just so I can add in more of that blue. If you simply pull that up, then it just fills in all the black with blue, which is very nice. And then just something extra, we're going to make a new raster layer. You can make one by clicking this little button over here or by Command Shift N. And by using a default brush, hardness will be at zero. And you can have this the biggest that you can. I'm sampling a color and making sure that my layer goes from normal to screen. And you can just go to town with this. It's pretty fun. Um, You can just add little pops of color in here and you can go darker if you'd like for that added color and then the very last thing I'm actually gonna crop this picture so gonna crop it just so, so it can be portrait just at an angle just a little bit I'm gonna cut off the top of the feather that it's really annoying me and this is pretty good you don't want it I don't want it too angled so we're cropping and the last thing that I'm going to do is simply add a pink border so just make a new raster layer sample a pink color and you can simply go over the borders if you're using a tablet it's much easier just to have a pen and just go just kind of go brush over the edges a little and you can I'm gonna keep them as they are um, and from here if you see anything else that you'd like to change if you want to hire the yellows in here make it a little bit more yellow you could do that or change uh, the orientation of the flowers you can do that but this was my final product, and I'll show you guys the before. So this was before, and this is after. Zoom in there. So quite a drastic change. Um, I tried to keep it as close to the original image. It is a little harder. As I said, I spent almost three hours on that image. This kind of gives you an idea of how I did it. So I hope you guys took something away from it, and you guys like this one as well. Thank you guys so much for watching and let me know if you guys have any certain requests or anything. Bye guys.